Welcome to the 11th lecture on computational geometry. Today we will talk about simplex range searching and in this first part we will have a look at what this is and we will try to solve the one-dimensional case. Let's have a look at the following example. Here we have a map of the Netherlands and there is roughly one point here per 5000 people so it's like a density map. And imagine you have the following task, you want to construct a new airport. Let's say at this point here. And now you shall find out how many people are affected by the construction of this new airport. So how many people are affected by the noise that you get from the planes landing and starting and everything. And for that you have to do some query on this map. But the area that is affected by this, that's not so clear. It might look like that because it can be affected for example by the wind directions. So the query that we have is definitely not an orthogonal query, it's not just a rectangle. For the rectangles we already know how to solve it, but for any kind of, let's say, polygon, we don't know yet. And that's what we want to do in this lecture. So what idea do you have to solve something where we have this query range, where it's just, just some polygon? Well. Usually what we want to do is we want to do something simpler. So we have a polygon here, we want to divide it into smaller parts. The first idea would probably be we divide it into orthogonal parts, but that does not really work well here. Instead, what we can do is we triangulate it, and then we get all these different triangles, and for each of these triangles we have to do a range query. Still, we don't know yet how to do a query on a triangle, so what would you do now? Well, one thing you can do is you look at these three segments that bound the triangle. And each of these segments defines a half plane. And then what we could do is we do a query on the half plane defined by this segment, one on the half plane defined by this segment, and one on the half plane defined by this segment. And then we report all the points that were in all the queries. How exactly to do that we'll find out later. The problem with approaches we had earlier were that they depend on the number of points that we output. And of course there are many, can be many points here and that we have to find by doing the query on this half plane. But they are not in the output. So if we do something that is output sensitive then we get a problem because doing three queries getting almost all the points, this is too large. So the problem that we want to look at now is this part. We have a set P of n points and we want to pre-process them such that we can do half space range counting queries quickly. So we want to report all the points that are inside here. And for you the first task is can you design a data structure for the one-dimensional case? So we have just a set of points which are just integers and at the input you get a number x and you want to return how many points are between integer x and infinity. And for that you should consider the two cases. The point set can be static so it doesn't change at all or it could be dynamic so there can be points entering, points leaving, points changing but you still want to update the data structure quickly so that you can answer the queries. Do you have an idea? Well, we can just use the same data structure we use most of the time. We use a balanced binary search tree. And we adjust it a little bit. So we want to augment all the nodes that they know how many nodes are in their subtree. That's something very simple to do. You can look at it in the Corminet Albook, for example but probably you already know this. And now how does a query look like? Let's say we're at the root. There are basically two cases that x is in the left subtree or in the right subtree. It can also be at the root, but that's a degenerate case of all the other two cases and we can handle it just the same. So what do we have to do if x is in the left subtree? Well, that means that all the nodes in this right subtree have to be reported. So we can report this whole point set here. But in the left subtree we don't know which of them are. 
So we can recursively go in here and do our same algorithm. Again, look at the left and right subtree, find out where x is, and then report. If x is in the right one, then we know none of these nodes lie in our interval, so we don't have to report anything here, but we have to recursively go into the right subtree. So on every level, we visit at most one of the subtrees recursively. And that means we have a binary search tree with n points. The height of a Bylot's binary search tree is order of log n. So the query here takes order of log n time plus the number of points that we want to report. And we have a balanced binary search tree of n points. So we know the height is an order of log n. That means we have to do order of log n of these steps. And in each step, we either count nothing here, or we count all the points that are in this subtree. This is something we call a canonical subset. This is a subset where all the points lie in our range. And now to count how many points we have, for each of these canonical subsets, we just ask them how many nodes are in your subtree, and they know this, so we can do this in constant time. So just counting the number of points takes order of log n time. If you also want to report them, then we still have to recursively go in here, and then we need order of log n plus k time, where k is the number of points reported. But for the counting, the number of points do not matter to us. And this is an observation that is crucial for the two-dimensional case, which we will have a look at in the next part.